talking with the experts. Getting started in podcasting does not have to be expensive. There are many good reasons to have a podcast. In episode 316, Robert Smallbone explains why. I totally agree with that. And as you quite rightly say, the information that you are after, it's not, in my opinion, it's not rocket science. It's a bit of general information. You know, what sort of things do you want to talk about, et cetera, et cetera. And I, if I'm, if we're getting guests on, you know, we would ask some information as well. You know, it's okay someone's saying, uh, again, I'm, for some reason, I've just got tax in my head. This morning, if someone so says, oh, you know, I'm an expert on tax, Okay, great, lovely. What, you know, tell me a little bit about your background. Send me over a one or two page PDF. You know, if you specialise in land tax or this form of tax, fine. Just give me a little bit of background. Um, and at the end of the day, as long as I know a little bit about the person, I normally find that's fine because I could be quite lazy at introductions, as in I'll let the other person introduce themselves. Because... Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm Rose Davidson, your host from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today, my guest, we're going to be talking about podcasting. Now, we haven't talked about podcasting on this podcast before, so I'm really excited to be speaking with Robert Smallbone about uh the things that you know that you need to do and the things that you shouldn't do and Robert is a podcast host he's a traveler a property investor and someone who has been diagnosed with autism Rob has plenty of insight knowledge and life experience and positivity uh, to bring to the table today welcome Robert and thank you so much for joining me Rose a pleasure and uh, looking forward to adding value to the audience good oh uh, how did you start your podcast and what's the name of it so the Property Nomads podcast started in 2018, at the back end of 2018, and really it, it was a case of taking action and doing it. Uh, my uh, business partner at the time and myself, we'd been thinking about starting one for a while, never quite took that action of getting started, uh, and, and it came to like, the late 2018, and we just put a quick plan together. And, and just took the action and got it and got it started. And uh, at the time of recording, we're I don't know, about 270 episodes or something like that in. And it, it's been really good fun to record uh, a lot of content, add value to, to the audience and to keep everything fresh. It's been it's so far so good. So do you interview others or are you just with yourself? Do a mixture. So depends on the content. So at the moment on the show, uh, Thursday's episodes are travel related episodes. So we look back at, uh, we're, at the moment we're looking back at a mammoth journey that we've done in 2014, 2015, went through uh, South America and Central America. So it's jogging the memory of that, which you know, gets us more excited to get out and about and do more traveling. And uh, then Monday's episodes, they're mainly a mixture of, of property and business related. Sometimes I record them on my own, uh, but we find probably as you found doing your podcast as well, that actually if you're interviewing other people, normally that results in, in better traction online and better download numbers. So it's a mixture at the moment. Yeah, so... We, uh, you know, how did you start it? Like, did you have, you know, whiz bang equipment or did you just start with, you know, just the basics? Just started with the basics, got a Zoom, got a little Zoom mic, uh, sorry, a, a Lavelier mic and a little Zoom portable device thing. I'm not the most technologically advanced person in the world, as you could probably tell. I got started with that, got started with 
I think five or six episodes, get some in the bank, so to speak. Uh, picked a podcast, picked a podcast platform. Uh, we use Omni Studio, I think, based in California, and and that was it really. Just just got recording, sort of got rid of the butterflies in the stomach, just started recording, and yeah, it's grown from there. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, I had an epiphany one night, and but within two weeks, I had had my podcast up and going. I didn't market it. I didn't. Um, I didn't uh, announce it. I didn't really launch it. I just did it, and then next thing I know, they're uploaded to SoundCloud and YouTube, and you know, off I went. And you are my three hundred and eighteenth podcast, I think. So, <laughs> in two to just not quite two years. So yeah, it's been quite a journey. Yeah, the, the thing that I found that if I look back on and people that are listening to this that are thinking about doing a podcast or haven't quite got started yet, I, we just wrote a date down. Uh, we set, I think, 5th of November, it was. We just wrote 5th of November down on a big piece of paper. That's when we're going to launch. And then the pressure, you know, just because you've written something down, that pressure shifts straight away. And so, oh, oh, my God, we, you know, we got to launch by 5th of November. And, and, and we did. And, uh, yes, yeah, you know, similar to yourself, you, we didn't do any social media campaigns or anything. It was record the content, add as much value as we can in the content and take the feedback from people and just develop develop the show from there. Yeah, I did pretty much the same. I, I just started with a, my laptop and a, and just the uh, a, um, laptop camera. And then I, you know, progressed in buying a, a Logi, uh, a Logitech camera and then I bought a, a Rode Mini and then that's pretty much all I use and then I just have my editing software that I use which is like not expensive and I, you know I, I really don't see what the fuss is that people say well they can't start a podcast because it's too hard to me it's I mean I guess you've got to be a little bit tech savvy to be able to do it which uh, which helps I think but you know you can always outsource that to a producer. Yeah, that's exactly what we do. We we outsource that aspect, and we we're not too without doing ourselves a disservice. We're not too fussy on things either. You know, if people want to, and um, what I mean by that is, if you know, if, if if I make a cock up when I speak, I'm not you know editing it out to sound perfect. If a balls up, a balls up. It is what it is. Um, same with guests. I think I've only ever had two guests where we've had to seriously edit the, the program. I think one was a tax advisor, understandable, got to make sure you're giving out the right advice in, in his case. Uh, and then um, the other one, again, I won't name names, but the other person said something they definitely shouldn't have said. Okay. So we, um, <laughs> we, we, we edited that bit out. Uh, but, you know, apart from that, we, you know, we just record, we record the file and we'll say to the interviewer, uh, sorry, the interviewee, now you're happy for it to go on YouTube. We're not going to do a massive amount of editing. It might clear up any background noise um, if if anything happens. So we're not overly fussy from that point of view. So but you, you are right. You can outsource that work to to a producer. You know, that's, that's what we do. We I record the files. I put them into folder, you know, the, the editing team and, and do whatever they need to do. And voila, episodes uh, go live. Yeah, I'm... Uh... Uh, my other, I guess my day job is doing pod, podcast production and uh, online event management. And um, uh, I find that, uh, you know, it's quite easy to to produce other people's podcasts. And um, especially if they're, you know, not overly fussy about, you know, a little bit of background noise or, or whatever. But, you know, there are programs that you can download onto your uh, computer or laptop or your phone even that that uh, takes away the background noise if you don't really want it to be there so you know there's always things and and workarounds for lots of stuff exactly you know where there's a will there's a way and the only thing i would you know add to that to be honest rose is that as with anything in life if i look listen back to our first 10 15 episodes yeah the that you know the content's good. The value's good. Have we, you know, have I improved? It's mainly myself that does the show. Uh, is have I improved over the last couple and a half years? Absolutely. The, you know, the the latest episodes I think sound a lot better than the original. It's because you know you'll get better over time. 
Absolutely. I, t I totally agree with that. You know, it, um, you get you become more confident and, you know, you, you know, the, you know, the stuff that you need to do to get to get where you want to be. Uh, and yeah. can I ask you a question? When you invite your guests on, do you have a, a process? Not really. And the reason for that is that the, you know, the property industry, is, as you can well imagine, it, it's fast. You have all sorts of different people. You might have an estate agent, lettings agent, uh, people that find property for people, tax accountants, insurance, loads of different things. So not we don't really have a stringent process to, to get on the show. If people reach out and they send a little PDF document and sometimes we've had people on because they've got a big social media following. Sometimes we've had people on because of what they want to speak about. We've had people on about like, social housing and you know political aspects of, of housing here in the UK. That's quite interesting. And for myself, actually, I quite enjoy conversing and more so listening to the guests as well. So if I'm interested, personally interested by, you know, a guest wants to talk about, I don't know, a particular part of tax that might not interest a lot of people but actually as a podcast host if I think hmm, actually I could probably learn something from that I'm going to get that person on just so I can sit back and listen and, and hear what they've got to say then um, then I'll go for it so in answer to your question no not really um, if, if people are you know want to talk property and they've got something interesting to say about property then you know nine times out of ten um, we'll try and get them on the show uh, where we can yeah, as a podcaster, I'd be interested in your in your um, feedback on the process that uh, that you took to get onto this podcast. If you you know want to share that, yeah. So I have to rejog my memories. It's been I think we've been booked in for a while, but I've been on a holiday. So um, how did we do? I think from either it from the top of my head, it was to do with looking through my recommendations on you know iTunes or online somewhere and the show the show appeared so I looked into it a little bit more and just followed your application process basically that you had um, I must admit I do like your application process it sort of cuts the wheat from the chaff because not everyone enjoys filling out a form online they want to you know 21st century we want things done now so I quite enjoyed going through that process and I imagine from your point of view, if you get people that are filling out that form, then, you know, people are serious about coming on rather than, oh, you're going to be on your show. Doesn't, you know, that's yeah. not that good. So, um, yeah, from memory, I think I've, I've come across the show somewhere online or, or on one of the podcast apps and thought, actually, if there's a way to add value to the audience down under, as we would say, then, then superb. Let's go ahead and do it. And yeah, from there, filled out the form booked in a time which we had to change because my flight got changed mm. so I had to change uh, we're recording this a week later than we should be uh, so my mistake and yeah uh, here we are recording uh, this episode now yeah you're right about the form um quite often I've had to cancel at the last minute because I've not received the guest form and you know I don't know anything about this person and I mean if they they want to be on my on my podcast and they need to supply the information that's how I look at it and, uh, you know, if they're not prepared to supply that, the, you know, their bio and whatever information that I request, which isn't a, a great deal of information, I must say, um, you know, then then obviously not serious. And so, yeah, so, you know, they get a bit cranky at me for cancelling at the last minute, but I give them that opportunity to have completed the form and they do get a reminder, you know, like 24 hours before. So, uh, you know, it's their loss. That, that you know if they don't want to be on and and spread their message i totally agree with that and as you quite rightly say the information that you are after it's not in my opinion it's not rocket science it's a bit of general information you know what sort of things do you want to talk about etc cetera, etc cetera. and i if i'm if we're getting guests on you know we would ask some information as well you know it's okay someone saying uh, again i'm for some reason, I've just got tax in my head this morning, so okay. that's what I'm just going to refer to that. If someone says, oh, you know, I'm an expert on tax. Okay, great, lovely. What, you know, tell me a little bit about your background. Send me over a one or two page PDF. You know, if you're specialising land tax or this form of tax, 
fine. Just give me a little bit of background. Um, and at the end of the day, as long as I know a little bit about the person, I normally find that's fine because I could be quite lazy at introductions, as in I'll let the other person introduce themselves because sometimes they, they'll do themselves more justice than I will. So I always find a worst, worst case scenario if the subject matter is interesting and I think there's going to be a lot of value on there. Even if I've only got a couple of lines about the person, sometimes I'll just let them introduce themselves because, mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone likes talking about themselves. Yeah, well, everyone, I mean, everyone claims to be an expert, but, you know, when you get them on, they're really not. And so <laughs> I've, I've found myself having to cut interviews uh, short because, you know, I've run out of questions to ask because, you know, they've not supplied enough information for me to, mm. to actually, uh, you know, probe a little any further. And they're not good conversationalists. So if you're going to be on a podcast, at least be able to you know, carry on a conversation at some length. True. And I'll hold my hands up. I'm not necessarily the best conversationalist. Uh, you know, my issue, or, sorry, not my issue. My One of the challenges that I have, and you highlighted it at the start, is with, with the autism, is my eye contact is normally very, very bad. So sometimes on video, if I'm recording, uh, not here because I'm recording in different locations today, but if I'm at our office, I've got a lovely view out the window. Half the time, I'm just looking out the window. I'm listening and I'm actively listening, but I'm, I'm looking somewhere else. And I've been on the receiving end of that as an interviewee. That can be quite off-putting because you're trying to build the rapport. So I've had to work on eye contact. I'm looking, square in that little uh, area on my laptop at the moment. I'm, you know, deadpan eye contact. So I can find that quite off-putting from an interviewee point mm. of view. Um, and but that's got advantages and disadvantages. I know from listening to various podcasts that people like to make notes as they go along. So again, we're, obviously this is on the podcast, we're on video. Now, if you or I are sat here on video and you know, we're, you know, got our thinking pose on and we're scribbling notes and we're going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're not looking at each other. That's, that's not exactly building great rapport. So sometimes it's easier to turn the video off, especially if it's an intensive interview. Um, you know, it's there's no right or wrong way of doing it, but you are no, you are absolutely right. no. You're there is. I just like doing both because I think well, I mean, you, know, you get your face out in the in the socials as well as your voice, mm -hmm. and you know, people get to know and like and trust you by looking at you, and so that's just the way I prefer to. And I have done uh, interviews with just audio, um, but I didn't find them so as such um, so much engaging as I do with these. Yeah, I think having the aspect of the video on at the same time really, really helps when you're interviewing someone because, uh, as you say, it helps to build that rapport even more so. And if you've got a good rapport, chances are your conversation is going to be more fruitful. Absolutely. Robert, if you had five tips to give a new podcaster, what would you advise them? Ooh, five tips. Um, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. What I'm going, I'm going to be cheeky and I'm actually going to open up a quick presentation because I can remember the points on there. What I would say to start off with, though, is if I can try and find this presentation, That's all right. is rule number one, don't miss an episode. That, that is rule number one. You know, if, you, if you're saying to your audience, I'm going to release every Monday, like we do, release every Monday. That without fail, there's no excuses, release every single Monday. So I would say be consistent on that um let me try and get this presentation up see if i can find it if not i will go through what i've got in my head um and i'm not going to waste time and find that i'm not able to find it uh yeah so number one would be don't miss an episode so if you're going to release on mondays for example release on monday absolutely uh, number two would be if you're starting a podcast uh, start with a bank of content so try and start with at least six episodes uh, reason for that is I think it's proven that people like to binge listen on mm. on podcasts. So if you're starting a podcast and you, you've just got one episode, okay, fine. But actually, if you've got five or six people like the first one, they will probably listen to all of them, uh, which again helps to build up that rapport quite quickly with your audience. So I'd say that would be number two. 
Uh, number three, start with the end in mind. What you know, why why are you running the podcast? Are you doing it solely for? Is it your main business? Are you looking to you know, be a Joe Rogan, get you know millions and millions through advertising and that sort of stuff in the future? Uh, are you doing it as part of your business plan? You know, we we through the for our podcast, for example, we have had people that listen to the podcast that have turned into investors. We've had people that we've been able to do a little bit of business with over the last few years, just because we're, you know, adding value. It's also a good platform to mention you know, about books that we've written, all, all that sort of stuff. So start start with the end in mind. Why are you doing a podcast in the first place? Tip four and five. Mm. Off the top of my head, off the top of my head, uh, okay. It doesn't Tip cost four. a lot. I mean, okay. I'll help you along here. I mean, doesn't you don't need to start with you know whiz bang uh, equipment. Um, that's it's pretty cheap. So you can start a podcast on your phone. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I would say on on that. Yes, don't be don't go in thinking that you need thousands and thousands of dollars to start. You don't. You can start it relatively inexpensively. Uh, and number five to work with number four would be, you know, do buy a decent bit of equipment. What I mean by that is uh, I would always recommend the Zoom H1D, I think it's called. It's a tiny little thing. I haven't got it on me, but it's about, you know, six or seven inches long. Get a decent mic as well if you've got that. I think I paid about £100 uh, a couple of years ago for one. Fine. If you've got one of them, you've got, say, something like Zoom as well, job done, you can, you can get started. So hopefully those five tips are okay. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Yes. And, and, and that, you know, this is how I, I advise my clients is that you don't need to start big. You just start small and work your way up and just and buy equipment as you can afford it. Now, marketing within the podcast, uh, how do you go about doing it? So we do it in, uh, we do it in a couple of ways. Uh, number one, we have with the, with the editing team that we've got, they are always on the lookout for new platforms, et cetera, to put the RSS feed on. So that's one way we can get onto more channels. With And what we found in the last few months is by having guests on, if you can get some form of verbal or written agreement, if you can, from the guests that they will do stuff on social media as well. And we've found that actually that really helps podcast numbers. So that's one way of doing it. And, and we do a little bit of social media ourselves. Um, you know, a bit of Instagram, mainly Instagram at the moment. And uh, in person, now that we're, you know, everyone's allowed to go out and about and talk and see each other again, um, you know, going back to regular networking events is always useful. Uh, we've got some branded T-shirts that we wear when we go out and about. So, you know, it's quite nice when you go to an event someone comes up to you and say, oh, yeah, I really enjoy listening to the podcast. Uh, that's why it's nice. So, yeah, a bit of a couple of traditional methods there, a couple of 21st century methods. And but at the moment, yeah, with guests, we find that if we get guests on, giving them all the information that they need, just like you've done with myself, you know, it's helped me advertise the show. We found that that's uh, really helped with numbers. So do you do any self-promotion during the podcast or do you edit it in or what do you do? We are, or I rephrase that, I am terrible at that, to be honest. It's something that I know I need to do. And the reason I say that is I've written, or my business partner and I, we've written three books. We've written three property books. They're all on Amazon. We do not even say that on most of our podcasts. We should do. We should do that more. Um, so. Yeah, actually, thank you for reminding me because I do need to either write a new intro or write a new outro that says that. We put all the links and whatnot in the show notes and every guest that we have on, we give them the same podcast links, book links, etc. So, you know, the more eyes that are on it, the merrier. But yeah, you, you've, you've hit a spot there, Rose, because it's something that we know we should do more of at the moment. We are, I hold my hands up, quite bad at doing that. So um, yeah, I thanks for too. reminding me I need to do it. <laughs> Yeah, I am too. I'm terrible at it. And someone pointed out to me today that I should be doing it. The podcast is getting really good reach. I mean, it reached uh, number 17 in marketing in New Zealand. Um, 
last week. Wow. So I couldn't believe it. It's 86 in Australia in marketing and uh, it's a 201 in business, I think. So I was like, so surprised. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And, if, you know, on that, if people, you know, if people enjoy listening to the show, which I'm sure they do, then, you know, if you have books or you've got other products, services that you can offer, then you know, it would make sense to plot them into your show somewhere. So, you know, I'll hold my hands up. We are, I'm not that good at doing that. I need to get better at that as well because, you know, we have a lot of value to give. And the other thing, I don't know if you're going to ask this, so I preempt it uh, with podcast advertising. I, again, we, in the past, we've monetized the podcast. If I look at what we've put into the podcast in terms of investment and time, et cetera, we, that return we've got back from some of the business we've done with a couple of people that have listened to the show, we, you know, we've got our return out uh, at the moment. Again, advertising is something we also need to look at properly and monetize it even more. So, you know, we, yeah, we just did at that, that, that stage at the moment where, you know, it's about getting as much content out there, great content out there as we can. But yeah, things like self-advertising, things like um, paid sponsorship advertising, we know we need to get better at that moving forward. Yeah, so do I. Just, uh, I, I just need some guidance, I think, and I'd, I'll, I'm looking for someone that can help me to do that. <laughs> anyway, Robert, um, it's been an absolute pleasure that 30 minutes has flown by. <laughs> yeah, I've wow yeah i'm looking at the clock i can't believe that's the time already it's been uh, really really informative and insightful thank you yeah, it's been it's i've enjoyed every minute of it uh where can people find you if they want to work with you or want to listen to your podcast or, or find out more about you so if people want to listen to the podcast check out the property nomads podcast we're available on most of the the platforms that you'll be familiar with itunes stitcher spotify etc etc if you're interested in looking at the books that we've written, then go on to Amazon. We've got Property FAQs, 101 Top Property Tips, and Buy to Let, How to Get Started. Uh, alternatively, if you're looking at working with myself and my business partner within the property industry, uh, I would email me, and that is rob at tpnpodcast.com. Beautiful. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure and I've enjoyed having you on. Well, thanks, Rose. Thanks for the invite and um, look forward to chatting again soon. Good day. You've been listening to Talking with the Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking with the experts.